Hello, this is V6WZ, and today I'd like to just quickly describe um, what the beverage uh, receive antenna system uh, is like out here. I'm just showing a map right now of the um, of the radio location of the remote location. Um, the fenced-in area uh, where the area the trees have been cleared is shown in this uh, square, and the smaller square is actually the fenced-in area, which is uh, which houses the radio shack where we are and the uh, and the tower as well. Obviously, the beverage wires are shown in uh, uh, on the map. Um, and there are two uh, distribution boxes in the field, one shown in black and uh, one shown in red. And uh, th these boxes are fed uh, with either uh, RG6 uh, flooded direct burial cable or CAT TV three quarter inch hard line uh, to the header boxes. And from the header boxes, there are then uh, RG6 lines which go to each individual wire. Uh, the wires range from 800 feet to uh, 1,000 feet. Uh, a bit later, we'll go for a walk. We'll go for a tour and walk along the east uh, beverage so that you can see the terrain as well as the termination point and the feed point uh, as we go. Uh, on this map also, you'll notice that there are contours and you can see that the radio site is located on the crest of this hill. We're significantly higher than the surrounding terrain. And, for the, and most of the wires go downhill. Uh, the Europe wire, the East wire, the South America wire, and Japan. The East uh, direct West wire, rather, and the Oceana Southwest wire kind of just go along the crest of the hill. I'm going to go into the other room here just so you can see. Uh, an example of the termination boxes, which you'll see in the field. Um, this is the a, um, termination box, which shows uh, the termination resistor. I'm using a 450 ohm carbon composition resistor. And I also have a gas discharge tube to uh, uh, protect from any lightning discharge that might hit the wire. This is the um, uh, feed box. Uh, which the RG6 feeds to, standard, uh, standard uh, binocular core transformer, and I also have a gas discharge tube across that to protect the uh, circuitry, or to protect the transformer. Uh, these boxes are, the, the, the mounts are on the lid, and I find that very easy to do. Then I just close up the lid, and, and these are really easy to deploy out in the field and very easy to build. So let's head out to the field and um, have a tour. Um, I'm going to get my boots on here, but first, um, uh, the, the main feed lines to the uh, beverage header boxes leave the trailer and uh, the, the shack, as it were, and are had been trenched under the pad and end up being further trenched out into the bush. And then we'll head out there and have a look at the, uh, we'll start on the east beverage wire, go for a tour. Okay, so we're heading out for a little walk. I'm going to walk along the east beverage wire. This is where we enter the, the bush. I've had to clear these trees and actually trench in um, cat TV three quarter inch hard line through the bush. It's a bit of a challenge with the roots, but I was able to um, clear enough of the trees to get a trencher in here, a large ditch witch trencher, which made quick root work of the roots and was able to uh, fairly quickly trench the trunk line to the header box. This is what I call the east header box. By the way, it's a nice fall day today here at uh, near Sundry, Alberta. This is one of the header boxes, the east box. Pretty simple two by four driven into the ground and then a plastic storage bin here actually is what I used to protect it and I painted it with um, coal galvanizing paint seemed to work okay the switch box I didn't provide a video on that but it's basically a relay box to, to uh, select any one of the individual antennas and there are four beverages that come off of uh, this header box and there's cat 5 that um, controls the control lines um, this the feed coax here is also grounded and each coax line going to the beverages has um, uh, a um, type 31 uh, large ferrite core on each line to minimize common mode um, noise 
on the uh, outside of the coax. So from here, there are four individual coax lines buried through the bush and then uh, go to each term beginning or feed point of a beverage. This, by the way, is one here. This is the Northwest beverage feed point. A little flower pot covering the box and it uh, is tied off there. Not sure how well that shows up. But uh, we're going to walk on the east line and it, it's over here. It's tied off to that tree, as you can see, maybe. <laughs> and then um, up here, the wire is insulated with an insulator and a number 14 wire travels down to the feed box. The coax comes in the RG6 and that's the feed box there tied to a steel uh, fence post just to hold it in place. And uh, I have two ground rods uh, here and based on my uh, frequency sweep, and I press the button there, based on my frequency sweeps it seems to be uh, adequate um, ground system because I'm fairly stable so far. So let's go for a walk down the wire. I'm not sure how it's going to show up but so you can see very heavily treed here at V6WZ and lots of tree clearing had to be done. I spent a lot of time here with my chainsaw and also been a very windy winter and I've had a lot of deadfall and a lot of trees fall um, this year as you can see as we walk along. And I'll show you at the termination end, I have a counterpoise or a counterweight, a large concrete block on a pulley, which helps in the event of a tree falling on the wire, it prevents the wire from breaking because it'll just uh, lift the weight. In fact, I lost a tree here just the other day on one of my other wires and it worked quite well. Pretty sizable tree here down. And uh, keep walking along, hopefully, not too bumpy. This is my exercise regime rather than going to the gym. I don't know if you can see the wire there. We're following it along. Here's a crossing point. This is a point where the east beverage wire crosses the southwest wire heading off to uh, Oceana going that direction. And we go straight. You see all the trees there. I, the, the, the beverage wire continues there. I'm going to do a detour around these trees. During the winter, the maintenance will be um, taken care of by using or wearing snowshoes because we get a lot of snow here. And um, I'll need to uh, come out with snowshoes and my chainsaw if, if I lose some trees during the winter. So I don't know if we can see the wire there. It's just above me right now, just right above us. And we continue down. The insulators here you'll see are just screw in insulators, uh, electric fence insulators. I neglected to say the wire is 14 gauge galvanized steel fence wire is what I'm using for the beverages. One of them I'm using 17 gauge. Oh, there goes a grouse. Too bad I don't have my gun. We hunt grouse up here too. And so there's another insulator. We'll continue down. As I said, this wire is about a thousand feet long and is quite a directive. Regarding maintenance, I mentioned as well that I will perhaps in another video show how I use the AIM. 4170 antenna analyzer to sweep all of my beverages and I sweep the beverages in the shack and then save the graph so that I know exactly what each antenna sweep should look like and then I have the ability in Calgary away from the remote to pull up by the way notice how we're going down the hill here it's quite steep here in Calgary, I have the ability to um, sweep the beverages remotely, any one of the beverages, and be, then match it to the expected um, 
sweep pattern, both for phase and SWR and all of the other parameters. And it's absolutely obvious if I've got a problem. And so this way, it'll save me the hour and a half commute, the drive out here. If we've had a big windstorm during the winter, I can determine remotely if I've had a, wa a wire down or a tree fall on a wire. I really don't know if this wire is even showing up here. Fairly large timber in here. We have a mixture of spruce, poplar, there's even birch and pine um, in this uh, forest. A fairly old growth here hasn't been farmed. The surrounding area around this area has been uh, fully farmed. But this has never been cleared. Now we're continuing down toward the termination. A lot of maintenance. You can see that I needed to clear a lot of the branches off of these trees. Generally the, the wire is straight though it'll zigzag a little bit but it's predominantly straight and it's perhaps at about 10 feet, maybe nominally 8 feet high. Just used a step ladder to uh, go up each tree and attach the uh, insulator. Finally coming up on the termination. It's straight ahead. <clears throat> By the way, when I'm out here in the bush, I do carry bear spray since I saw a large black bear outside my perimeter fence. So I do like to have my bear defense with me. I don't know if you can see the termination, but we're coming up on it here. So this is the terminating tree. It's a large poplar. And I have the counterweight, a concrete block, just tied off with some uh, more galvanized fence wire tied with a rope and I have the pulley with an eye screw into the tree that's a marine pulley rather than the cheap pulleys you can get at Home Depot that um, marine pulley will last longer regular electric fence insulator and the feed line is uh, clamped onto that with a galvanized clamp and a lug to eliminate any dissimilar metal problems copper wire comes down and I've coiled the copper wire up you'll notice the only purpose for that is if I do have a tree down, of course, the line will extend outward and that's to provide slack so that I don't break my connection. And then the uh, feed wire goes into the, uh, into the box, which you saw earlier. Uh, two ground rods. And that is it. And then we look back along the length of the line. I'm going to turn the video off and I'm going to truck back up the hill.